So, the Nintendo Switch. I'm not gonna lie, it's a really, really nice piece of hardware. It's very powerful for what it is, and you know what? I think it would make a fantastic tablet. And it makes a great games console too. But I always felt that the hardware was a little bit wasted on that, like I could be using it for more than just playing games. You know, for instance, it might be nice to have something like this to take with me and, you know, watch movies on, browse the web, and do other tablet stuff. So, you know, I would think it would be quite cool if you could run, say, Android or even full desktop Linux on it. Well, can run Android too. Indeed, this is Ubuntu 18.04 running on the Switch, and I believe it's courtesy of a project called L4T, and they've done some other stuff, like they've got a emulation thing for Laka running on the Switch. There's also, as I mentioned in the intro, a project to run Android on the Switch by a different team that uses a lot of the same code, because indeed this is all open source. However, I've got to say, this is all also a little bit of a hack. By that I mean to say this is not official Nintendo anything, and if you want to do this, the way that you do it is first you need an unpatched switch, you can tell if yours is patched or not by putting in the serial number to a website, then you need to go ahead and ground two pins on the Joy-Con rail, this is of course assuming your switch isn't patched, you can get like something like this to do it with, um, or you can use like a paper clip or whatever, but you know, expensive hardware, probably don't want to be shoving paper clips into it. And then once you've done that, you can plug that into your computer through a USB Type-C cable, load up the exploit, and then what you have to do is essentially get a micro SD card with the Linux image on it, put that into the switch, and then from the exploit you can load that up. Now that's not an in-depth tutorial, but if you want one of those, there are plenty out there. It's not necessarily hard, but you do need to make sure that you have the right switch and everything. But once you've done that, as you can see, this is Ubuntu running on a switch, and I've got to say, I really, really like it. The vast majority of the hardware works, you know, stuff like your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, you know, the battery life is pretty good, even suspend works, like I left this on overnight suspended, and it was fine, the battery didn't go down at all. So you can use it as you would normally use your switch. Um, the Joy-Cons surprisingly work. I know that they work plugged in, and I'm led to believe that they work unplugged too, which is fantastic. I haven't tried it yet, but the dock works also, but I barely use this thing docked, so there's not much point in it for me. But theoretically, if you wanted, you could actually dock this and use it as a full desktop computer, which is quite a cool thing to think about. Performance is really good also, so if we go ahead and launch the file manager, you can see that we can, you know, move the window around. It's fairly quick. Um, the built-in web browser, which is Chromium, I didn't install that, that came with the image. If we launch that up, you can see that, yeah, that performs really well too, so you can use this to browse the web, watch YouTube, whatever it might be. So let's just go ahead and quickly test that out. You get an on-screen keyboard, which after an update seems to have stopped automatically showing up for some things, which is a little bit weird, and I actually can't seem to get it through the camera viewfinder, but yeah, it's a, this is a little bit finicky, which I guess would be expected because this is a full desktop operating system on a tiny little tablet screen. So let's not bother to type the full thing in and let's just punch it in. But as you can see, that's web browsing on a Switch, which I've got to say, that's really impressive. And as you can see, it performs really well. Scrolling works as you would expect. If you want, you can go ahead and hide the cat, like the keyboard, but that's quite difficult to do from the camera. You can have like split screen. It's all really cool. And all of this is using the Unity desktop, which is one of the more tablet friendly desktops out there, but it's still not as good as say GNOME would be, which I do wonder why the team behind this project decided to go with Unity as opposed to GNOME. Like I'm sure they had their reasons, but it does seem a little bit bizarre. Now, this is a games console, so I assume like most of what people are going to be doing is gaming. So what you might ask is, can I throw my emulators on here and play with those on here? Well, you can. I would probably recommend using Laka for that though, because the emulation experience here is it's okay, but it's not the greatest. So let's go ahead and launch Dolphin. If we go into graphics, you can see that you can actually configure 
this to use Vulkan. Yes, the Nintendo Switch does support Vulkan, and yes, it does work under this project. So we go ahead and close that and launch the game. Now, I actually did have some problems with this earlier, and I've heard a lot of people saying that um, Vulkan within the sort of stock build of Dolphin is a little bit buggy. But let's just go ahead and see if it works. If it doesn't, we're going to have to switch it to use OpenGL, which as you can see, yeah, it's, it hasn't worked. But I did have this working earlier. However, the performance under Vulkan was really no better than under OpenGL. Which is a little bit of a shame, because playing GameCube games on the Switch would have been pretty cool. But I am led to believe that there is a way that you can do it. Which, I think it's through Laka once again. And apparently people have reported 30 FPS up, like, there and about using that method. For me, I usually get about 15 FPS using this method. But it's still pretty cool to see it, and if you've got emulators for less demanding systems, then they will work. So let's just go ahead and load this up, as you can see. And I'll prove that the Joy-Cons work as well. Now you might be asking why am I running this in a window? Well, when I full screened it, I quite quickly realized that I had no way to leave the window. So I basically had to reboot it, and then I had to reload the exploit, because this is... I guess you can think of it as being tethered. And you can probably hear that the sound is indeed working. And as you can see, the performance is not great. But it does work. And I have a feeling that if someone sat, like, sits down and makes a Switch-optimized GameCube emulator, then it will work, and it will work very well. But I suppose that would probably be on the stock firmware, as opposed to, like, Linux or, you know, Android or something like that. But as you can see, we're loading in, and as you just saw there, the controller is working. And eventually, and here we are in game, as you can see, it's not great, even for what is a fairly lightweight GameCube game. So that's the state of GameCube emulation on Linux on the Switch, as far as I can tell. But of course, you know, you can potentially try and build custom builds of Dolphin, and you can mess around with some settings, and you can see what you get. I've heard of people getting actually pretty good results. But, what you might be saying is, we don't want emulators, we want real games. Well, if by real games you mean running, like, Steam on the Switch, not happening, because this is a ARM CPU. Steam and most games on Steam require x86. However, I'll show you a real game. If we go ahead and launch it up now, as you can see, that is Super Tux Kart running on the Nintendo Switch. That's pretty cool. Now, if we go into single player and we pick our racer, let's see what happens. So it does take a little bit of encouragement to do things sometimes, but that's fine. The controllers do work. And as you can see, we're playing Super Tux Car on the Nintendo Switch. And the controllers do work. And when I went into the controller configuration, it seemed to recognize the um, two Joy-Cons as separate devices. So in theory, you could take your you know, Linux-powered Switch on the go with you. You could pull it out, and you could, in theory, play Super Tux Kart using the two Joy-Cons, just as you would play like Mario Kart or something. You can also exit the game, of course, which I found I couldn't do in some emulators. So let's just go ahead and quit that. And another cool thing is, of course, these Joy-Cons, they come right off. And when you're holding it like this, well, it pretty much feels like a standard tablet. So you really could just use this as a Linux tablet. Or if you're maybe more sane than some of us, you could use it with Android, and that would probably be quite a good experience. Which really, at the end of the day, makes me wonder, why exactly did Nintendo not use, say, Android or some version of Linux on this thing? Because to be honest, this could have been a really, really nice tablet. And I think a lot of people probably would have bought it that, like, you know, aren't gamers. And I think... Once these exploits start getting to the point where you can write them to the internal storage and you know you can boot them on tethered, which at the moment, as I said, this is tethered, you need a computer to boot it up. Uh, if you don't have a computer, it will just boot up into the stock Nintendo firmware, which does mean that you can keep using your Switch as you would use it, you know, as a Switch, which is pretty nifty. 
But to be honest, I think at this point I just want Linux on it because it's pretty neat. But with that said, I think that's all I have to say about this. It's a really, really cool little project. If you have a Nintendo Switch that's unpatched and you're not scared to mess with it, I would highly recommend giving this a look. And I would also highly recommend checking out what other Switch projects there are out there because there's a lot of cool stuff happening with this cool piece of hardware. But with that said, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.